Today I'd like to maybe discuss music therapy, mental health, and psychiatric settings. Real brief history, all dating back to the ancient Greeks. Um, yeah, biblical references. We first see our um, first article in the United States, late 1800s. Um, I think a big changing turning point was uh, in World War II, we started to receive these soldiers with shell shock and treating them. Uh, we now know that as PTSD. Um, in these settings, uh, we'll find different diagnoses and populations. Um, we have the children, the adolescents, the adults. Um, maybe some diagnosis, we'll see. There's some conduct, or oppositional defiant disorders, attention, um, some aggression, maybe psychotic behavior, some motor excesses, and maybe um, even eating disorders. Adults, um, schizophrenia, bipolar, other depressive orders, disorders, um, anxiety disorders, um, maybe in forensics. Uh, You'll find antisocial disorder, um, PTSD, some chemical dependency. We have a few goals um, these interventions are aimed at. Maybe to help these individuals release stress, um, help them with the concentration or focus. Um, safe space is a really big one, especially for the therapist to create rapport. Um, the shared experience, the intrinsic value of music, and uh, coping with the here and now, I think, is a big one. Um, while they're in the hospital, it could be a good change, you know, a big change for them, what they're used to, or just feeling alienated, maybe. Um, motivation, hope, uh, self awareness, lessons for the future, self expression is a pretty important one giving them a voice. Um, and, you know, it can also help with um, trust and the value of listening. We have four main interventions, composition, receptive, recreative, and improvisation. These are all, um, I think, greatly influenced now by uh, the 21st century and our high quality recording capabilities. You know, so when we record these sessions, we can often refer back from both the uh, therapist and client. So for composition, you know, we think of songwriting. Um, here we could maybe identify some triggers, introduce some coping skills, um, give some insights to the client. Maybe they might find some themselves reflecting upon the recordings. Um, they can present their music to them. Um, to others or listen back to it themselves, uh, maybe add some self-reflection. Receptive, we have a very in-depth um, Bonnie method of guided imagery and music. Um, you know, it kind of use these altered states of mind, bring unconscious to conscious. Um, uh, relaxation techniques. Um, self-awareness, lyric analysis, I think, is a pretty important one um, in these settings. Um, definitely can be used as a coping skill. The recreative, we, can, we might think of uh, sing-alongs, maybe performance. Um, we could do some lyric substitution. You know, um, this would help to build the self-esteem, help them realize um, they're not alone. And also for the performance, you know, some of these settings may have hospital bands, they might have talent shows, um, so that's a big one. Improvisation is widely used. I kind of think of the analytic music therapy as the musical free association where we use improv to bring unconscious to conscious, um, you know, some things to be addressed. Um, group interaction, 
you know, for the groups or even one-on-one -on -one sessions. There's a lot of interaction between client and therapist. Um, once again, self-expression, giving them a voice. Um, definitely helps to build the social aspect. Um, you know, an example of a drum circle. We have different settings. Um, an acute might be a three to five day stay. A long term might be up to uh, you know five seven months. Um, outpatient is pretty important to me because it's like kind of a follow up of you know as a scientific community how do we introduce them back into the community? Um, how do we you know? help them while they're out there and also as a community ourselves is how do we you know accept these um, individuals you know do we have biases are, are we do we have warmth for them um, so I think there's a lot of um, important aspects to look at that as far as outpatient it's not just about being in the hospital um, we have our private hospitals our state and government funded here you'll probably find your forensics um, and of course always the big question is what is the future of music therapy in these psychiatric settings um, in my regional uh, area you know Arkansas we have very little awareness of music therapy and in of its implications applications um, so I think a lot of raising awareness um, you know, is, is a pretty big, you know, it's, it's important. And to find the funding also, um, and, you know, we do have scientific advances, you know, neurological music therapy, and pharma pharmaceutical interventions. I didn't mention earlier, but, you know, with comorbid or dual diagnosis, we often treat these individuals with um, pharmaceuticals that could have side effects that may interact or counteract, and that could also pose a, a problem. And you know, just how do we, you know, better deal with that? Um, working together as a team, um, using different methods, um, you know, the interdisciplinary. And kind of back to the uh, raising awareness and the funding is I think community music therapy might allow, you know, regions like mine, Arkansas, to uh, really get involved and help um, reintroduce these individuals um, back into the community, especially if they excelled, you know, or showed great interest in these um, these programs in these settings. So I think that that's a very um, that shows a lot of potential there. So, um, yeah, music therapy, mental illness, and psychiatric settings.